This is Focus with Jack Cottle. Good evening, I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome to this month's edition of Focus. This month we're talking about the Sanford Underground Research Facility in Lee. Three guests with us to talk about that today. Mike Headley, he is the Executive Director of the South Dakota Science and Technology Authority and the Surf Lab Director. Jared Heiss is the Science Director up there at the lab. And Wendy Straub is the Hoist and Shafts Director. Now, the Sanford Underground Research Facility, or the Sanford Lab in Lee, is the former Homestake Mine and is the deepest underground laboratory in the United States right now currently dozens of research projects going on in the facility a lot of those down 4,850 feet underground. Mike we're going to start with you uh, how busy of a time and how exciting of a time is this up at the lab these days? Uh, it, it is very busy uh, and incredibly exciting I've been there for about 14 years and the level of activity right now is the greatest it's ever been. Uh, and that's a good thing. We've got, as I'm sure we'll talk about, as uh, Jarrett will get into the science a little bit later on, we've got some experiments that have uh, recently, or at least one, that has set a world-leading um, result, which is incredibly exciting. And then we are working with Fermilab out of Chicago to excavate for the one that will be one of the biggest science experiments ever attempted on U.S. soil, a big neutrino experiment. So incredibly exciting. Now, looking at the intent of the lab when it originally started, do you feel like it's all going in the right direction? It is. It is. For a number of years, uh, we, were, we were originally going to be funded by the NSF. They decided not to. And then uh, the Department of Energy has picked up the funding responsibilities. And with this uh, new neutrino experiment, we're expecting that to take you know, roughly about 10 years to fully construct. And then it's going to operate for at least 20 into the future. So um, our, our timeline, uh, you know, the horizon we expect the lab to be around and operating is not just a few years, but decades into the future. And so uh, we, we've got some of the world's best science coming here. We're making a big impact on K-12 STEM education here in the state and the region. And so, uh, yeah, I, I think we are definitely fulfilling the original mission and vision that was set out for the lab. What do you think of when you think of some of the science that's going on down there and some of the things that are being discovered and may be discovered in the future? Uh, it, it, it's incredible. What's, what's really, well, number one, this, some of the science is a little bit hard to translate <laughs> to the average human. And so, um, so that's always a challenge. But, uh, but yeah, the, the science what we're doing really in a number of fields uh, is, is some of the best in the world. And, and some of these experiments have a, a very good shot of uh, actually winning Nobel Prizes for their work as well. So that's pretty, it's a little, uh, you know, hard to, to soak in and realize that the work that, that you're doing could lead to discoveries that are recognized at that level. Uh, now Jared Heiss is the science director up there at the Sanford Underground Research Facility. Uh, how do you look at the progress of the science and where you guys are at and where you're heading up there on the scientific side of things? It's amazing. It's, it's wow. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing so much. We have 29 different experiments, uh, some big, some small. Um, and we, uh, Mike alluded to the dark matter experiment, LZ, Lux Zeppelin, uh, that made a splash this summer. Uh, they have been on site since 2017, uh, finished installation, commissioning, <coughs> and with, 60, with just 60 days worth of data, they vaulted to the front of the, the, uh, the pack looking for dark matter in the world. So they are the world's leading dark matter experiment looking for WIMPs. Um, and they have another four years uh, in their future to, to collect data. So that's just one example. We have biology, geology, engineering experiments in addition to physics. Um, the geothermal group uh, called Sigma V is just wrapping up. They've been on site for, for a number of years, funded through the Department of Energy. Uh, as they ramp down, there are other projects waiting in the wings to inherit that infrastructure. And instead of looking for ways to harness geothermal energy, extract heat from the Earth, some of these new groups are turning that on its head. How can we store heat in the rock? And so we have some groups that are interested in that type of technology. Uh, we also have biologists who, who visit us sampling for extremophiles, uh, not in the, the clean physics labs where you might find uh, LZ or Majorana, uh, one of our other physics experiments. They're off in some of the, the darker, deeper, uh, hotter, more humid areas. And they are uh, collecting samples, analyzing those back in their laboratories, and finding new organisms. So we're finding new life at SURF. Uh, and we're finding life in areas in the rock that, that, that we wouldn't have expected. So. As a scientist and a physicist, 
What is it like for you to actually be involved in this kind of cutting edge research in cutting edge investigations? It's tremendously exciting. <clears throat> so, so in my past, I, I, I was in the nitty gritty and doing some of the, the detailed analysis and research and, and that was fun. In my position as the science director at SURF today, I, I don't have the luxury of getting into the details quite as much as I used to, but from my vantage point, I can, I can learn a little bit about all of these different projects and that's, that's incredibly rewarding. Uh, meeting all the scientists coming to our facility, just, just bathing in their enthusiasm really uh, and, 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 and seeing their excitement to get underground, do the science that they've, they've, they've been dreaming of and then see the results come and the community's excitement about what is happening at SURF. Uh, it's, it's really incredibly rewarding. Now Wendy Straub is the Hoist and Shafts Director, so you're involved in the infrastructure yep. of what was an old underground gold mine. Yep. Uh, how is that progressing as far as transforming that infrastructure and keeping that infrastructure going into this modern cutting edge laboratory? Well, as Mike stated, there's a lot going on. Um, the Ross shaft has been completely refurbished. Uh, it's, uh, the old steel was stripped out with new steel put back in its place and the, the shaft itself has been supported with rock bolts. When the shaft was constructed in the 30s, they had no rock bolts installed. So we've brought the safety into the modern age through the, the shaft. And then the hoist itself, both the skip hoist and the cage hoist, have both been refurbished. So you can imagine the undertaking many, many years for both projects. And last year, we deployed the mining contractor for LBNF Dune via the Ross shaft. So it's exciting to see such a great part of history come back to life. Now, uh, there's also a lot of excavation yep. going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, how different is what the mining that you guys are doing down there now from what these guys were doing back in the gold mine days, or is it really that much different? Yes and no. Um, I think it's a lot more technical. There's a lot more monitoring. Um, the designs we have to mine to a certain spec. And so there's a lot more follow-up. We're not mining for, um, you know, for a profit. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit different scenario. And uh, looking at that, who's doing this work? Uh, as some of the old miners from Homestake, I know some of them have stayed around and still doing that old mining work and the old shaft work. Uh, are those guys still around? So Tyson Mining is the contractor that's doing the actual excavation. And they have hired some local talent, uh, some of which did work for Homestake. In my staff, we have a few left. They're getting fewer and fewer uh, far and far between, as well as some of the surface and electrical also have the Homestake staff, which is very valuable to have people that uh, are familiar with the operation and have a lot of that history. Uh, now, Jerry, we were talking earlier, some of this cutting edge physics research, some of it crazy hard to understand if you're not <laughs> up at that level. But why, why is this important to just a regular guy who doesn't know anything about physics? Sure. Uh, I, if you talk to the scientists, they're wanting to understand how the universe works. And, but that's not everyone's uh, reason to get out of the bed in the morning. So <laughs> for, for South Dakota, uh, there's a lot of education opportunities. Mike alluded to, to K-12 education opportunities for students. Uh, but, but even beyond that, technology-wise, a lot of the, the, um, the innovations in nu uh, nuclear physics and high-energy physics have trickled down to people's everyday lives, uh, whether that's uh, medical imaging, uh, packaging for, for industry, uh, all the way up to like, GPS timing, uh, that and uh, the World Wide Web. These all trickle down from, from innovations <coughs> and just the way that scientists do business. The sensors that are being developed for the current generation of experiments and, and some that were uh, proposed for our future, they could also transform technology in, in, in similar ways and, and those also might trickle down into what the consumer might find uh, in, in a consumer electronics store in, in, in a decade from now. So there are uh, practical applications that we've seen in the past and, and more to come. All right, we got to take a break. We'll continue our look at the Sanford Underground Research Facility when we come back with this month's edition of Focus. I'm Jack Cattle. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about the Sanford Underground Research Facility in Lead. Uh, Jared Heiss is the science director up there. Now, one of the 
interesting projects that you have in progress right now, the Dune Project, the shooting neutrinos from Illinois up here to lead. What's the status of that, and, and what do you hope to learn mm -hmm. by doing that? Uh, the excavation is, is going well. There are uh, just over 40% done, the excavation. Uh, so making these huge hulls, uh, and just to wrap your mind around how big these are, a football field and a half long, eight-story tall building, 65 feet wide, and there's two of those. All told, uh, those caverns will hold 13 million gallons of liquid argon. That's the target that will catch the neutrinos that are being shot through the Earth. Uh, so the Dune project is, is incredibly exciting. They, they have attracted 1,400 researchers from all over the world to conduct uh, this, this experiment on a planetary scale, right? shooting neutrinos through the Earth. There's, there's not a, a tube or anything like that. The, the neutrinos interact so weakly uh, that they will make that uh, transition uh, and, and be captured in the, in the argon here at SURF. So the, the science of Dune, uh, looking for properties of neutrinos, uh, we think that the neutrino can help explain why there's more matter in the universe than antimatter. And the difference between a, a neutrino interaction and an antineutrino interaction will help uh, scientists tease that out, uh, we hope, from the neutrinos. We can also hope for the death of a massive star and supernova neutrinos uh, coming our way. Yeah, hope, yeah. I, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people are hoping, maybe. Uh, but that, that, that would be spectacular. We would learn a lot about the mechanisms of, of how stars, massive stars, end their, their lives, and possibly how some of the elements in the periodic table are, are formed. Uh, and if the flux of neutrino starts and then stops very suddenly, then we would see the formation of a black hole, and that, uh, that's interesting in and of itself. So now lots of science to come out of Dune. Now also uh, another large dark matter detector. Yes, LZ. What's, what's happening with that? Yeah, uh, Lux Zeppelin uh, just made uh, their first announcement this summer with the first 60 days, uh, vaulting them to the, to the forefront of the, uh, the WIMP dark matter search community. They will plan to, to collect data for another uh, three or four or five years. They're already planning for the next generation. So we have 10 tons of xenon as the target for LZ. They, uh, the community is looking to, to ramp up to maybe to 80 to 100 tons of xenon in a much larger version. In fact, where the LZ experiment is right now, the LZ detector, just the inner part of that, was the biggest uh, uh, cryostat, biggest vessel that we could bring underground. Uh, the new larger experiment will have to come up with ways of constructing cryostats, thermoses underground, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's a great challenge to have. We also need more space. The Davis campus, which currently hosts the LZ experiment, doesn't have enough space for a detector and the corresponding shielding for these 100-ton versions of, of a dark matter experiment. And so to that end, we are looking to build new space in addition to the LBNF caverns. We're looking to build one or two new caverns on the 4850-foot level for this new and exciting science. Is there a simple explanation as to what dark matter is? Uh, it's something we have not seen before, <laughs> and that's why we call it dark. Uh, we can see indirectly evidence for dark matter. Uh, the rotation of our galaxy is spinning too fast for the, for the, for the matter and the gravity associated with that matter. Uh, it should be flinging itself apart based on what we can see. So we assume or we infer that there's something there that we can't see that's holding our galaxy together. You can also see indirect evidence on light bending around objects that aren't there, gravitational lensing. We have a lot of evidence to suggest that there's some, something out there that is, uh, that is uh, forming uh, our, our solar system, our galaxy, uh, and is playing a, a really important role in the universe, and we're, we're in the search for that, uh, for that missing matter. Uh, Mike Headley is the executive director of the South Dakota Science and Technology Authority and the SURF lab director. He's talking about all of these scientists gathering together to get in on these projects. How much interest is there around the country and around the world of getting in on what you guys have going on up there? there there's a lot of interest. And so um, we've been doing this for a while. We, and we've had a number of experiments who have come to SURF and worked underground and, and done that successfully. And the word about that has gotten out. Uh, Jared and I uh, participated in a strategic planning process for the, a, a portion of the physics community that we work with called High, Ener High Energy Physics. And um, it was an 11 day session that we uh, were at up in Seattle and, and really meeting with all the various types of scientists in that uh, area. 
uh, and what they want to do over the next 10 years. And uh, bringing additional experiments to surf was a common theme. And uh, Jarrett talked about needing additional space, and that's really the, the driver is uh, to be able to host these bigger and future generation experiments, we need additional space to do that. But yeah, there, there is definitely interest. We, we get requests from people all the time who are wanting to come and, and bring work to surf uh, to work underground. Now, this is very expensive stuff that you guys are doing up there. Uh, how are you guys set for funding? How is that working, and how are you looking in the future for funding? Our operations funding comes through the U.S. Department of Energy, and right now we are getting uh, about 30, well, it's a little over 29 million per year for that. Our overall budget is 43. Um, but the day-to-day -day operations is that 29.1 million. And about five of that 29 goes towards infrastructure improvements. And so uh, that's been good. For the, over the last three years, we've gotten some money for infrastructure that is beyond what the LBNF Dune project is doing, really more of the general infrastructure improvements that have been needed since Homestake shut down and, and we've been operating. Uh, we do need more, and we'd like to be able to get to about 35 million to provide about 10 million a year for those infrastructure improvement projects. So how do you go out and sell what you guys are doing to get additional funding? Uh, we, uh, yeah, we have great support from our delegation in D.C. Uh, the governor, uh, Governor Nome, and past governors have been incredibly supportive. And so uh, we definitely have uh, advocates up on the Hill who are, are talking about surf and, and the need to, you know, really what, what this is, this is the national lab, national underground lab for the U.S., although it's not necessarily called that because it's a, in essence viewed as a state-owned entity. And so, um, yeah, we've, we have great advocacy on, on the Hill and, and the experiments that we're working for as well are also promoting the work that we're doing and expanding it. All right, we got to take another break, and we'll continue our look at the Sanford Underground Research Facility when we come back with this month's edition of Focus. And hey, good evening. I'm Jack Cotta. Welcome back to this month's edition of Focus, talking about the Sanford Underground Research Facility. Wendy Straub is the hoist and shafts director. A lot has changed since the mining days down there. I was down there when it was a mine, and that cage was flying down that shaft. Yeah. Now it's going a lot slower. How much of these changes in infrastructure work that you guys are doing is to make sure that this thing can keep going for a long time into the future? Well, we do things every day. Our primary focus is to make sure that things are safe. You know, whether it be our ventilation systems, our hoisting systems, uh, and as you know, we're, we're pumping water from the underground, so we have all these systems that we do to support the underground and the research that Jared spoke of. Um, some of the things that are in the future are doing some of the same upgrades to the Yates that we've done to the Ross. We are also upgrading our ventilation system with a new fan out at the Orohondo shaft. And so we're, we're trying to make everything as modern as we can to support the laboratory for the life of, of, the, of the science. Feel like it's going in the right direction down there? I, I'm really excited. This is my second time <laughs> back at the Sanford Lab, and uh, it's quite a change from the first time. Um, the funding is, is going in a positive direction, and a lot of improvements have been made, and quite a few more folks are on site, and you know, engineering and science and contractors. It's an interesting mix of folks to be working with. You've got you know, the mining people and the engineering and, and then the, the physicists that are on board. So it's, it's very interesting every day. Uh, Mike Headley is the executive director of the South Dakota Science and Technology Authority and the Surf Lab director. You know, we talked about the science and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, how about the economic impact? How, what difference is this making around the area here? Yeah, uh, one of the things that we track really closely uh, is how much money we're bringing in and spending uh, in the state. We know that the state made a pretty substantial investment when all this started, and so we're very interested in making sure that South Dakota benefits from this. Uh, we just finished an update to our 10-year economic impact study, really looking at this decade, the decade that we're building LBNF Dune, and in parallel with that, operating SERV. And, and the net economic impact is about $2 billion um, uh, within South Dakota alone. And uh, we're positively um, uh, contributing to uh, about 1,200 jobs annually in the state as well. So it's pretty impressive numbers. Uh, how about the outreach that you guys are doing? Uh, you've heard talk about mm -hmm. this helping schools and college students in particular that are 
getting down there and getting part of this. How is this outreach working out? Yeah, we, we have a pretty broad uh, K-12 STEM education program. Includes a number of elements. We have a number of curriculum units that we've developed that we share with teachers here in the state. Provides them five to 15 hours of hands-on instruction that they can use with their students. Uh, we go out into the schools as well and do presentations about SURF and the science that Jarrett talked about. And uh, we have, uh, for college students, we have internships during the summer. And uh, so we've got, the, we, there's other things we do as well, but that, those are kind of the main things that we do throughout the year. And this last year, going out into the schools and, and working with students um, directly, we worked with almost 20,000 uh, students in K-12 education this year, this last year, last school year. And so, um, and then during the summer, we do teacher professional development. And over the last two years during uh, summer PD, we've worked with over 1,000 teachers here in the state. So pretty uh, impressive. Absolutely. Uh, Jared Heiss is the science director up there at the lab. What's the future look like for the research that you guys are doing? Where do you see this all going 10, 20 years from now? There's lots, there's lots that we are hoping will happen with the LBNF Dune project, uh, finding out about neutrinos. That's obviously a very strong part of our future. We're hoping to attract the next generation dark matter experiment. The double beta decay experiment that we have uh, currently operating, the, uh, the Myrana experiment, the next generation of that experiment is, is likely going to another lab, uh, but we're hoping to be in the running for the next, next generation, so the 100 ton scale of, of double beta decay experiment. We have the geothermal groups that I mentioned. Uh, there are a couple others that, that haven't been funded yet. Uh, or that are in the process of securing funding. So we are, we are um, people are knocking on our doors and some of that science, uh, the next generation of dark matter experiment would take us well into the next decade. The LBNF Dune project is 2050 and mm -hmm. beyond. Um, yeah, very exciting. What is this like for the scientists? You said the Dune project 2028 is when you hopefully maybe can get it turned on. Mm -hmm. uh, after that much work and that many years, what's it like among scientists if this thing works and you get the results that you are dreaming of getting? What's, what's that like for these guys oh, and it's, women? It, it's very satisfying. You, 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 put, you put so much effort uh, and it's, it, it can be generations of effort. Uh, a, a faculty member with, uh, can, can start on a project uh, mentor grad students or postdocs, and and then that faculty member can can retire, and 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 their their progeny, if you want to think of it in, that, in those terms, will continue on and, and reap some of the benefits. You have to have a long view on some of these projects. Uh, planning for this this neutrino effort, uh, it's been called different names uh, going back into 2010, uh, and so getting first science in 2028, uh, you you have to be you have to be patient, but. People are, are tremendously excited about the science, understanding why we exist, why there's more matter in the universe than antimatter. Teasing out that mechanism from, from nature, it, it, it drives people. It, it, it's, it's understanding how the universe works at that level that, that is really exciting. Well, hopefully you will find what you're mm. looking for. That will be quite the day. Uh, we are just about out of time. Mike Hadley, Jared Heiss, Wendy Straub. Uh, any big events coming up? Soon, I know you've got some uh, outreach events that are coming up. Um, anything that comes to mind? I, don't, I mean, we, we've started our Deep Talks uh, series again, which is every Thursday night at the Stanford Lab Visitor Center up in Leed. Right. And we usually feature all kinds of, we, from operations to science, to education and outreach. So that's a fun. Hey, it's cut you off, but we gotta go. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you again next month for Focus.